Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Just keep on being crickets. Like, that's going to help. So, uh, something in the chat. There was a uh, question that went through the game, the trivia game, about what was uh, it's a lack of, of interest or emotion for something that others find exciting. That wouldn't be crickets. The term was apathy. It occurs to me, as I've been talking for years now, that would be applicable to something that was eminently dangerous and you don't respond to. Interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you Behind the Woodshed, this is Cricketude Busting Episode BTW RLM 413. As if you, when you get to the past cast, you can get there, the blogcaster, if you get on the internet, do the search, you should be able to track down the, where the links are. For those of you not live uh, that can't get them anyway, you can get them later. And uh, moving through to try and bring more and more information to get people to get less apathetic to eminent danger. Things that have been inside the system, things that are defeating us, the whys that we're being defeated, and the lack of action that we take, that we need to be taking if we intend to not put up with more and more nonsense. Question, or excuse me, a statement. I think it was from the YouTube uh, RLM account. Thank you very much to Slowburn678. Uh, yeah, I, your second part of the comment, you'll see anybody goes there will see a, a comment. He goes, the, uh, the, what we talked about last week, the innovation zones. And I have to thank Frumpy. He said he, he said he lasted 17 minutes. That's cool. Someone lasted 17 minutes. Better than 12 that some people last. And then uh, I guess it gets to you. And uh, so you got to understand, I live in this world 24-7 trying to figure out how to maybe save people that don't care to be saved. Anyway, any rate, innovation zones. You're now seeing more clearly what they're doing. As I said, they're going to ramp up here. 2020, they're using the COVID, COVIDs, COVID fraud, fraud vid 19 to take you down and bring, bring this thing forward faster and quicker. Uh, but he, Slowburn678 says innovation zones equal to new balkanization. And he ends up getting to a point here that I wanted to point out to you that we found. I figured it out for myself and why we started to uh, attack things certain ways. The new balkanization comes up with an idea. They separate you. They, they break down your system. They, they atomize you over time. Uh, and he, uh, the Slowburn678 state goes on to say at least to start of it, the start of it, no need for secession as it was thought of in the past, innovation zones, mega cities, and Second Amendment sanctuary state zones, or perhaps constitutional zones. I saw a map in the 1950s, as I remember showing the communist projection of the U.S. divided into four sections as the beginning of the total breakdown. And so there's been lots of discussion and maps and things in the past would explain that there's people who had plans and designs on the utopia they wanted to bring to everybody. Because some people looked at what was going on and realized there was a major defect of, of, of a couple, but there's a major defect within the Constitution that I don't think people that I don't think people put appreciate so much, and it was really been implemented through the states much quicker. And they do it through the codes and statutes that everyone abhors and, and, and will say it's not law, and that's not government. That's just tyranny. And so that's. You know, we're kind of outside. We've been outside of law the whole the whole time. That's why it's the rule of law, what I call the rule of law, the brand of some union guild of legal. And we haven't figured a lot of this out. We we'll point it out. We'll call it out. We'll throw everything underneath the term corporation, but we won't really understand. There's people underneath there that come under the cover of these persons, these corporations, these now people too. And they do everything through these surrogates. Well, I think most everything gets done through the surrogates. But uh, Slowburn goes on, uh, 678, goes on to say what I, what I think is very, very important. Corporate autonomous zones, as he asks the question, corporate autonomous zones, they are already, but this will make them official. This new phase of technocracy will be very interesting. Yeah, the next, next, the moving iteration, the growth part of this now is very interesting, although it's very deadly to anything we thought about 
for property and property rights and law and everything else that we think. But I want to get to the point here. They figured, someone figured out a long time ago that they didn't have to change constitutions in order to change your world. And they came in through law. And you can see the law working in the Constitution. And I found that it does work if you know where to look. The law still sits there. This law that re- preserves the republic, if you will, if you please, to be able to look at a distinction and even distinct, more distinct than the world, because there's lots of republics in the world, but the one that was the representative form that was really sitting to secure to you, not secure you, but secure to you rights, where the government took a position of neutrality and made, sh- and made, and brought peace, not by the, by the power, by the force, but by the law that people were using amongst themselves to keep going that this idea that making foreign official is very important to understand this is what the bar association did in many states if i I can only i can't find them everywhere but they work like they everywhere if nothing else where they brought themselves in under the color of law foreign agents foreign corporations and then once they got in they altered, they supplanted your state code, uh, your organic law, and for their code and their reviser statutes. And that was a, they tell you that right in the statutes if you know where to look, how I came on to what this was going on, that it was going on. It's been going on for a long time. The supplantation of your way of life over time through the codes and statutes and, and sometimes through the amendments of the Constitution, the organic documents. And so this Making something foreign official is a probably the most serious threat that in the last 10 years they've really ramped up. And you're, you're, gonna, you're seeing a lot of that. They go leverage funding, they pay for your own destruction, and they come in and they parcelize you, they balkanize you in many different areas. And you heard about that last week. They're going to make corporate structures official as governments, just like your as law and your as money. Corporations owning lots of land they want to claim it's under economic development to develop undeveloped lands, but that's a cover. It's all a cover. Again, another fiction. And they get people to believe it, and the apathy will allow it. And you think oh, it's not happening to me, or you have, or you justify, justify it by, oh, it doesn't. I can still afford something, and you don't respond. And these guys are taking this place down, piece by piece. And so I have, I have little empathy, little sympathy either either when I hear people saying, oh, the government's bad. No, you're dealing with tyranny. You're dealing with a way people have figured out how to destroy the mechanisms of government, and you didn't keep it. Now, how do you do that? It's those savings clauses. How they come in is they can't actually dif- dis- disturb the organic law. They can ignore it, but that's the criminal. It's up to you to keep it, and that's where I, f- I keyed in. That what the government was doing, what our lawsuit was about in 2013, was that they were coming in, as I told you, I even identified how being part of a, the 2013 comments to the legislation going through to the state or state uh, legislature. I realized over time, it took a few months to figure this out. What they do is they put these bills, they have the, the legal industry and the colleges, the law schools, through the university system, making codes that I don't know exactly how it gets done, but what it ends up looking like at the legislature's point is a bunch of what apparently are disparate laws coming in, suggestions for laws, which on their face look really good and look like they could do something. The, the warm and fuzzy stuff hits everybody, and they all everyone seems to capitulate to it. But they came in like a constructor set pieces. You can't, unless you're looking at the totality of it, like I think I was, why I could see it, You can't tell these things are coming in in pieces like erector sets. What they do is they get the legislatures to pass the law that doesn't look, that looks innocuous going through. And someone in the application of the law that's now about passed, someone assembles all those parts and pieces and puts them together to actually go do what the function was. And so I realized this was a very insidious way to pass legislation that they use the system. They officialize foreign impositions inside your law, and then it becomes your code. And that's very difficult, if not impossible. Well, in the face of the Bar Association controlling it all, they wrote the law. They're not deciding whether or not what they did was right. 
you are going to have a very difficult time in the future if you don't start catching up with this. And I don't know what else to say. People will say, okay, shrug your shoulders. And I don't even know what to say about that. This knowledge that we have today was not known to us, at least for me, before I got into seeing what I could find. And so there's few of us have pieces and parts. But the secret here that I really appreciate Slowburn 678 talking to, speaking to, is the officialization of this foreign nature that no one seems to notice and no one seems to care to plagiarize a comedian. Not so funny. I'm just As I say that, I just want to stop talking. This is such a serious and dire thing. Uh, it's coming inside so incrementally in ways that people aren't aren't there. There be it's beyond their perception. It seems not everybody's perception, but most people's perception. Until you start seeing that, you really can't address it. Everyone will attack the wrong thing. Will uh, argue about. Will complain about the wrong thing. Anyway, so I appreciate Slowburn six seventy eight bringing this. Oh, they officialize. This is the point. They officialize foreignness in your own system, and no one says anything about it. No one knows how to attack it. You're watching this in this cancel cancel culture. You're watching it. Through uh, this, we uh, pledge allegiance to democracy, and everyone says, "Oh, the, uh, you know," gets all patriotic about the fact that they just told you they're going through mob rule. And you watch, what's mob rule? It's really no, it's tyranny. It has no no basis in law whatsoever. People just buy into the fact that it does. Look what COVID did, fraud, vid nineteen, absolutely the same thing. It's all the same. The bar association in the fifties came in. And supplanted. They literally say, they tell you that they were supplanting. Well, go look at that word in international law. Maybe you'll understand that the international overthrow was happening even back then. That it had roots from long before that. So there's a lot of ways to get at the problem that it's there. Very few will be interested in the imminent danger. And the imminent, the imminent, I should say, is really kind of an interesting point. We are in imminent danger moment by moment, and we are losing all these things. But it's over such a long time. Imminent takes on a funny and interesting definition as well. It's imminent to your way of life because as you look at your land patents, as a couple of those people are talking to those, they say forever. Well, that's a pretty bold statement. But you know, there were some land patents that had to be agreed to in the treaties of the United States taking on lands from Mexico. And they're still honored. And so maybe forever has a position. And then again, we're moving with non-governmental organizations that could care less about all that. And so maybe, maybe not so. But anyway, thank you, Slowburn, for making that observation. I hope, I'm glad that point gets through with what I'm saying in your studies and your application of what I say. Now, I guess I would ask, what are we going to do about that? Now, I offer quite a bit of things that we can try. I tell you what we do and how we're successful. I tell you how we're doing things and how, where we're, maybe it's not successful except we prove exactly what I'm telling you is going on. Now, as I say that, this is what's happening in the Tennessee case. I'm really astounded how how bold they have become. They don't even try to cover it now, which a lot of you will say you knew. But there's a way to know how. There's a nuts and bolts per, um, thing that they're doing. You can actually watch them build their their facade. And it, you go in and you can tear, tear it all down. Well, if no one, no one else, as everybody else is apathetic to the imminent danger of what that means, this thing is going to go the, for the future that they've planned. And they've been planning and working at this for a, for a long, long time. And that's part of the problem. Now, I w- almost as wish would have been a war. I think that's what we were admi- admonished to understand. Every 20 years, it should have been clean sweep. In other words, what happened on uh, whatever happened on January 6th was... Uh, no, that was that was child's play. Anyway, moving off of that, moving into this. Thank you again, Slowburn. I appreciate your insight, your application of what you see. That's exactly how this works. They come in the inside of our system, and they eat it out as a cancer of what looks like law. It's as law, just like everything. You're as money. I said it before. It works through agency. It works through non-governmental organizations. It works through foreign entities that are deemed domestic and then made agencies of your government. And I, in front of you, without insult, if you're still, if you're listening, maybe you're, you're getting too, well, it's, it's getting too much again already. I'm, I'm again 15 minutes in. It is quite involved. But once you see it, once you understand this, as I said before, we don't, we don't involve ourselves. When we address something, I never involve myself with how the nuts and bolts of it. 
We just attack how they're how they're violating what? How they violated the savings clause. The one little thing that they violate is can be addressed immediately and brought up. And thank you, Grimner, for the feedback on the audio. Making some fine adjustments adult, fine adjustments to try and get a little little bit better. So hope it's better today. Anyway, so yeah, so we I just can't believe I can't um thank you more. I, really, this is just an insight. I don't think that people will appreciate how profound that observation is, the balkanization. But it's not just the territories of the states like we see through governor. It's inside your laws. It's inside dysfunction of the system. It's inside the administration. It's it's everywhere that you see it. And so, and yet, for as pervasive as it is, the savings clause are there. If people would just grab onto them, stop being apathetic, grab onto them. And then do them in mass because that seems to be our problem. There's not enough people jumping in to help. In other words, let me jump over to the Tennessee thing. If we had, and it happened a little bit, there was some help. Some letters went to the Supreme Court. There's like two or three things going on in the Tennessee case that you really need to appreciate. There's a challenge going on to the Supreme Court before the case gets there on appeal. That we anticipate it's going to go there because of the destruction of the law. It really is coming through as this what is it, the, um, oh, darn, darn, I can't remember the name now, but it's a reflexive, it's the reflexive interpretation. There's no basis in law whatsoever. There's no principle in, in into it. And you have to go to the, to the prior law and bring it out. And then some people jumped in and helped to make some letters to the Supreme Court. It didn't ultimately make a statement to change their mind, but it did make an interesting order come out, which we then attack again. So there's a lot of work going on in order to expose what everybody knows is the corruption, but the nuts and bolts of the corruption. And if we had more people jumping in on that, and more and more and more people coming to say, that's not cool, that's not okay, we might be able to start turning the tide. But that takes people that are not apathetic. Not that they're not exci- excited, uh, they're not uh, emotional over something that someone else is excited about. This has nothing to do with exciting at all. Absolutely not. This has to do with some people who see eminent danger that people are not responding to. And what's the point of that? It was the duty of everyone who wants to be free to be free, to make sure that was going on. You can't be apathetic against that. I keep telling you for all the people that want to do the non-aggression principle, it's not aggression to protect yourself from someone stealing things from you, like you being free. And we understand there's a limitation to how free you can be. We're not living on an island, actually. And yet, in that, these foreign interlopers, usurpers, take advantage, and we allow them the excess, and we buy into what they say. Anyway, so, again, the incorporation of things foreign made to look like official is what you all are suffering that is now, hopefully, people will appreciate that more, what was said in the comments on the YouTube on RLM, I think it was. And thank you very much again. And moving into more of this hysteria, uh, it's just amazing. If COVID wasn't, the COVID, uh, COVID change 19 isn't enough. The change agents, right? It's cha- hope and change. COVID change 19. If it's that not enough, a new study reveals when the earth will run out of oxygen. That's right. The green religion and cancel culture pulls the plug on the respirator of life because there are humans that just won't listen. As we get the report, the scary, scary report, the earth, earth will run out of oxygen. If carbon dioxide wasn't enough, and you think carbon dioxide would, would actually protect us. But here it is, folks. Oxygen is an essential element that is commonly accepted as a possible indicator of life on exoplanets. Now, I don't know why carbon dioxide isn't as important as here. I mean in the concept that it feeds life, the majority of it that makes our oxygen. Anyway, moving on to the subtext here. However, the oxygenated atmosphere of Earth, maybe that new exoplanet they're talking about, that makes it inhabitable may not be permanent. So if Cove Cove Change 19, if Fraud Vid 19 isn't enough, we're going to run out of oxygen. All those respirators are going to go useless to us while we suffer in our hospital beds. 
And the story is all oxygen on Earth may disappear. And here it is, folks. Like climate change. In the next one billion years, potentially resulting in the death of all animals and plants on the Earth, a new study published by Nature Geoscience reveals. Can we move on yet? Can we get past this cancel culture? Can we? No, we can't. Moral absolutism and cancel culture. Another story. I didn't even know much about this. I haven't studied it more, but I guess even a Dr. Seuss is being attacked by these same types of people that will put things of nature present for today that we even have to worry about it. Things that were going to go on in a billion years, I don't know about how we're going to be so interesting. You want to be apathetic about that? I guess we can do that, can't we? Because it's not imminent, the problem. And yet this non-imminent things is made a problem so that these very same cancel culture people can solve the problem their way. You're looking right at, the. for those of you that understand this, and I've told you it's not quite right, but we'll go with it because most, most people understand it. The Hegelian dialectic in action across the globe is exactly what this whole thing is. But uh, there's a moral absolutism and a cancel culture. Uh, there are now calls to erase Theodore Geisel, a.k.a. Dr. Seuss, from the lexicon because in the 1920s, 1920s, that's 100 years ago, folks, and the 1930s coming on, uh, he was a racist by today's standards. Furthermore, a supposed study, which I cannot find anywhere on the author says it's uh, Dvorak, says he can't find it, claims that his children's books are also racist. Well, if that's coming from the same people that just want to do everything's racist because it's not what I believe, well, then we're going to find it. They go on to talk about this, except uh, the cartoony stylized coolies, in quotes, uh, the only strong example of the latter accusations it seems to be the cat in the hat is, is somehow a black face, even though the face is white. Oh, and he's a cat. And so we could, all these nice words, these pun-style words, well, a cat, if you were a beatnik, was somebody that was a person, and yet we still see the problem today. White face is now condemned. It's not even look loud, and it's called blackface. Uh, everything gets inverted. It's this world that does have, has no basis and no foundation, and, and no one, it's, it's, it's like the snow globe that you keep shaking up just to see the privilege of the white, right? That if you keep shaking it up, it looks white. The point is, is we're dealing with this thing called moral absolutism, the cancer culture. What happened 100 years ago is now racist today, and it's not, except for someone's claim and the people and their ability to promote that. This goes on to say over and over, talk about this problem of racism. And I've told you, I come from more of a different definition if anybody could find the Doubleday Dictionary of 1974, I'd like to see just the excerpt even from it, uh, get a copy and send it to Mark uh, on the beast at protonmail.com. Of the word race, go look at the word race. And the example there, as I've said before, has nothing to do with the color of our skin, which, as Martin Luther King would have told us, is to our obligations, our character, our character. That was about our obligation, which if you look at Title 42, Section 1981, is that you will pay exactions of every kind. So Martin Luther King was telling you something, whether or not that was good or bad, or he was in on it, I don't know. I consider everybody in on it that doesn't stand up against it. So everybody's racist in 100 years. The article goes on to say that, you know, we've had these problems, but race is really an interesting problem. It's not the color of your skin it's actually being able to separate certain making groups of things. And the example in the Doubleday Dictionary wasn't of a black skin. It wasn't red skin, yellow skin. It wasn't of people uh, of their skin color. It was the definition example was the race of lawyers. If you don't know who controls this place, and the, the hat tip to that. In the Doubleday Dictionary, under the term race, the example for that is the race of lawyers, not the color of your skin. And that is what I started to realize again, more fortification about we're all colored under the law. And as long as they get you fighting about the skin color, you're going to miss the point that you're all colored subject to this exaction of every kind. You're all colored people. 
We're talking now in the law, the legal that's been imposed upon you. And until we get past this, these people are going to be able to use this nonsense to keep your mind uh, that you will just shut down and not deal with it or not not even kind of address it at all or they well ultimately get what they want. It, oh, it's a hundred year change. It's a hundred year thing they know about. They've been working on this. Well, what happens a hundred years ago was also a couple of other groups that were starting and they haven't gone away either. So Dr. Seuss, I don't even really care about a lot of this, but it certainly occurred to me there was something going on relative to also this racist issue, what we talked about last week. And I'll maybe get to that at the end of the broadcast, try to run up a couple of other things for you. That comes back to what I was telling you last week. The reckoning on racism comes out in the, it's always in the news now. It's coming out more and more and more. So we have the story here, Dr. Seuss, uh, where he is supposedly making a cat that is in white face <laughs> that's supposed to be the coolie, the black man, the black people is, I guess, you can make up all kinds of stories. I don't, the man's dead. I don't know. I suppose there was lots of people that were saying lots of things. But that's the free speech thing that we're supposed to get beyond and let people have their say and move on from take the good and understand the bad and make our decisions and hopefully refine ourselves to be better people if that's a problem. Now, we have seen some of that refinement relative to, we say, slavery. But see, to me, and to me, you can have your own opinion, certainly. To me, everyone's been colorized, colored by the law to be slave to the law not secured to their rights by who made who came together to make the law supposedly in your representation. So we can talk about this racism stuff, but the definition I keep focusing on is like, woe unto you lawyers, where you hid the key of knowledge, and those that essentially brought the key uh, you, you hindered is part of the main part of the problem here. It is part of the association that, envelops this globe under a brand rule of law and democracy. That if we don't get past and find out who the race that's causing prejudice and discrimination really is, we're going to be assumed, subsumed by them. And they come by many colors. So you can, that just proves that it's not about color of your skin. You, you can make it about color of your skin, but what works in the world is not has nothing to do with that. It's used as a stocking horse. The color of your skin is used as a stocking horse. And I'm sure and I, there's many people of color, if I can say that, not colored by the law, but all of us, if we have di- different color skin, I said, let's go to Siena, and I don't mean to, in, to insult the albino here, but the color of our skin is irrelevant to these people using that, to, using the coloring of them, of us as people, against our own nature, our own will, and our own laws. This incremental abuse that goes on that we accept, again, you cannot really be apathetic against. And we're going to have to get beyond that. That uh, I'm sure, as we see, that we saw in the Trump thing, the the country, cancer culture would want to throw a blanket. You, we you, we got to stop. You can't be racist. And yet they'll do not, do not require that you identify yourself to profile you which is essentially racist, ultimately, that we would find people who supported Trump were of all colors. And so this is the type of dynamic that we're walking into. These people are winning the day on the because of the propaganda side and because because there's no no resistance in the proper way. We want to tend to argue in te- instead of trying to go after the problem itself, find the cause and, and, and extricate it from from the from your world. So Dr. Seuss is being extricated for being a racist 100 years ago, and I I just am kind of imp- interested in that because the next story I found on this website had to do with orchids, and Mother Nature making orchids look like monkeys. If, if it could be said that a guy who draws a cat in whiteface is actually talking about black people, then Mother Nature making an orchid look like a monkey must be doing the same thing. And so I think Mother Nature's pretty racist here, I think we got evidence of it. I got a link for that. They're adorable little monkeys, but nevertheless, this cancer culture should be on all over this instead of Dr. Seuss, but they're not. And so, anyway, these uh, anyway, adorable little monkeys, and we want to translate, anthropomorphize all these things into a racist stalking horse. 
by some of us who use that in order to pummel other people at will at this point. And so we cannot be apathetic to this imminent overthrow of reason. And and again, this is a mental issue in my mind. This is an abuse that's coming out of these people. And they haven't come to terms with the fact that a lot of what's going on is fairly equal. And then we get into the localities which may mistreat, because of the way the law is written, mistreat certain people and put them down and put them under. And it's very difficult to come and rise above. The fix of which seems to be us taking anybody of any skin color, given that we're all colored by law, standing up and making, let me move it, move it over to what we've been talking recently about John Jay or Alphonse Fagiolo, talking and giving you a little bit better uh, point for point how to build records that I've been talking to you about making, how you've begun to make a record to come back from that oppression is upon each one of us. And you'll find out that the color of your skin means nothing to that. You're still, we're all looking at that oppression. If that doesn't prove it, I don't know what will. But you won't see that, that you have a cause and effect to defend yourself until you step up and do it. So here, they're after Dr. Seuss. I don't know. I don't get too involved in all that. I just found it amazing because what they're talking about is racism, which connects up. I hope you'll see this to last week. And what the inside cancer is pushing through what I showed you in the innovation zones, which we find out is the balkanization, the non-governmental organization balkanization of your country, your cancer being eaten piece by piece inside out. It's the same cancer culture that allowed, and this becomes now more of what the global problem is, allows companies to use genetic engineering through the biodiversity treaty that's supposed to be protecting everybody. But when you look at it and you really look at this like I've had a couple people look at Title 42, Section 1981 to notice that your rights are really exactions of every kind imposed upon you. And you go to see, you'll see non-governmental organizations will be doing that in the future, a law that was written way back in 1868. And we see that then in 1970s, two or so, we get the Biodiversity Convention, the so-called treaty, and it allows for genetic engineering, the very thing that fraud vid 19 is based in, But now we find some pushback, if you will, and if you'll step in and do it correctly, finally, and it wasn't in the United States, the beacon of freedom, it was somewhere else, Monsanto found guilty of chemical poisoning in landmark case. What's the point about where do I get to the genetic engineering? Because that's how their chemicals work. They genetically engineer life in order that their chemicals will work so they give a place to sell. They give it to French farmers. They promote it as something good. And then the farmers accept it because they're in the bottom dollar. They're the ones that are really, in, they feed everybody, but they're they're subject to nature. They, they have to deal with nature. They'll have to deal with the lack of oxygen in a billion years. No one else, the people will have to deal with the lack of food if that happens, but not the farmer, not initially. But the French farmer who can no longer perform his routine farming duties because of permanent pesticide injuries has had his day in court. Literally, the perpetrator of his injuries found guilty of chemical poisoning. The French court in Lyon ruled that Monsatan's lasso, lasso weed killer formula, which contains the active ingredient Alicor, uh, caused Paul Francois to develop lifelong neurological damage that manifests as persistent memory loss, headaches, and stuttering during speech. Aren't those some of the COVID, fraud, fraud vid 19 symptoms? At any rate, so Monsatan is now caught relative to this weed killer. And so we have to fight that. This is all coming out of. It didn't come out of the beacon, uh, beacon of freedom, in the United States. No, they actually embrace these things. It didn't come out of the UN. No, they had, they embrace these things. They're brokers for all this. And I, and I hope I did the French right. Uh, Frumpy you might be able to check me out on what I just, the names I just used. And so, just moving through this, this cancer, this cancer in the world, <laughs> the cancel culture, uh, the moral absolutism is not so absolute when you allow them to allow wrong, then again, we can't be apathetic on that. Maybe this is developing into the theme, the apathy. All on a question in the trivia of RLM chat right before this broadcast with Grimner doing the blues. 
I guess live anyway. The archive isn't that way. So, so what, let's keep moving on and, and saying you know, the beacon of freedom is not certainly in the in the United States. It's not exampled here at all. Uh, so we go to Lavrov in Russia. He makes a little interesting little comment. Uh, out of Russia is a Russia is against vaccine passports for traveling. It's contrary to voluntary inoculation. So not only is Russia becoming more the beacon as the United States is showing that the stinking abyss is is backing up over the world, over the continent, coming in over and, and invading everywhere. That uh, I guess the Monroe Doctrine was supposed to say the continent was not susceptible, shouldn't be susceptible to. But Russia is now standing against vaccine passports. Russia is concerned that every other Western de- not democracy. It's a, democracy, not the republics, not as they were de- defined to protect and secure their people. But the Russia is going to stand up and show that the inoculation should maintain a voluntary nature and that because of that, Russian citizens shouldn't be discriminated against. Become They become a race that the other race doesn't like based on policy, based on non-governmental brokerage of corporate karma, the P being silent here. And so I find this fascinating, the distinction between the countries. Not that I want to run to Russia, and uh, I couldn't. I got a link here. Luckily, it has a, what do you call it? It has a caption, because my Russian uh, isn't even close to rusty. And uh, I'm glad I can read what he's saying. I just found this fascinating, how the non-beacon, the beacon of criminality, criminal communism, is actually becoming better at coming up straight up with what needs to happen. In other words, looking past the fact they made their own vaccine for a fraud, uh, that they are now becoming the beacon of of what is more free. It just, I don't know if you... Okay, so the apathy in the United States of America is, is really pathetic. It's not apathetic. Anyway, digital health pass. So... Lavrov is saying we don't need a we don't want a <laughs> we don't want a, a voluntary inoculation we don't want vaccine passports I mean we want voluntary 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 inoculation we don't want vaccine passports we don't want to be discriminated against our race of people forget the color now we're talking nations doesn't want to be discriminated so what does the beacon of freedom do digital health pass the ones that support the corporate structure IBM and Moderna hook up to capitalize. Capitalize, capitalize. There's your capitalism on the COVID reset, not COVID-19 reset. It's and it's already in the works. On top of that, no, they're going to do. They're going to capitalize on this. They're going to make money on this thing that they've invented that no one is shutting down. IBM and uh, get ready for your digital yellow star. Apparently, IBM is uh, partnering with COVID-19 mRNA vaccine maker Moderna to track vaccine administration in real time through the various blockchain, artificial intelligence, and hybrid cloud services. If that don't tie it all together for you folks, technocrats right here, according to the company press release, they have collaboration. How many times did I talked to you last week about that? And over the time, we'll put the collaborators, right? In wartime, those people were considered spies and shot. We'll focus, quote, focus on exploring the utility of IBM capabilities in the U.S. It didn't say Russia, did it? Yeah. Okay. In the recently unveiled pilot program uh, for COVID-19 now, Digital Health Pass in the state of, of New York, which effectively deputizes private businesses to enforce government-imposed COVID-19 regulations. If I didn't lead that behind the woodshed, I don't even know what more to say. People just need to listen. And this is what's coming on to you. Third party, I told you it's going to be the third party problem was going to be our worst problem. Now we got deputized health ministers and guess what they haven't done in the first instance? And I get very few people telling me they got their letter. And thank you for the few that did that did did get their letter. They're going right after what I told you they would. They're going to be making the first action against you without the first duty that they were supposed to do to identify what they were fighting. That's right in the news now. We don't even have to it's not even question. 
what's been working under the skin. It's presumed to go in the future. What health administration, what vaccine administration, if they don't plan on marketing to you repeated doses of this, as they claim it's safe and secure and that it's okay and it has no after effects. Oh, forget anything down the future. Oh, we're only looking at a window because that's when most of the ones happen. Well, that was on old technology on top of that. At any rate, there's a certain way that you're going to have to produce, uh, pr- approach this. Otherwise, you're going to be confining your world smaller and smaller, and you'll be accepting the incremental encroachment on your freedom, on your being free, and uh, there's not, and it'll be show uh, on people that have no government because they're acting outside of law. They're tyrants. The very thing the Declaration of Independence says that the, the right to bear arms was done for, to stop which is the thing I find fascinating, gets lost is in this whole thing. As I get maybe town, I'm going to anticipate something. The, you know, that's not about guns. The second amendment wasn't about guns. I guess I'll end there so I can stop my story, move over to here, and keep the idea going with this, now the COVID, now the vaccines, which Russia says they don't, it's does it, not necessary, the vaccine passport, unnecessary. And don't discriminate our race of people now that you've made us a race. You've fabricated us into a race that you're now going to harm. If you don't see this working in the world, and speaking directly to what I was talking about, the focus of the non-governmental real estate agency, a real estate thing um, um, organization that looks to get leverage funding to advance the cause and uh, balkanize this place as at least one other listener has identified. Doctor who mocked coronavirus vaccine refuses, uh, uh, refusers, excuse me, vaccine refusers dies days after getting jabbed. And so we're hearing a lot of these, uh, this going on, uh, people getting jabbed within the 14 days, within two weeks of that uh, Downey, uh, that uh, Anthony fall prey to Fauci. He uh, tells you if it happens within 15 days, uh, that's a sign, and it's exactly within the construct of what they knew was going to happen, which to me is just admission of crim- uh, high crime, uh, not even mis- felony, not misdemeanors. Uh, just days after getting injected Wuhan coronavirus, va- coronavirus COVID-19 vaccine, Dr. Withhold R- Rozewicz, Wicks, a Polish physician who openly mocked vaccine skeptics, died from the jab. This is why I like the word jab. It's not a vaccine. And when I get to say jab, I don't make the misstep by saying it's a vaccine because it's not. It's a jab. They're jabbing you with a private proprietary mixture of experiment, which is, looks proprietary and it changes your cells and then marks you with that, that privatization. The official story is Dr. Ro- Rozewicz died from heart failure well, that's interesting. That's the same thing that uh, Marvin Hagler just died from two weeks after his his jab. But it is uh, painfully obvious that he suffered from the most serious adverse event uh, of all associated with the vaccine, death. Now, how do we know that? Because the government's own papers put death as one of the side effects of the safe vaccine. Okay, so we can keep making this stuff up or we can start becoming real and we can start to become more responsible to protecting ourselves as the incrementalism, the internalization, the causing of these manda- these things that are not experimental become mandatory, especially in the future to your little ones, when they turn this to be nothing more than another injection that they give to your little ones as for you to uh, participate in their schooling, their standard, uh, how they educate you, how they indoctrinate your little ones. So I don't know what else more to say. I think the women of the, the women with children in this country, any any around the world, really have a power. I wish they would roll together. I wish they would get together and do more focused things like what I'm su- suggesting. It's because they're they're the future, and the women uh, are going to be not used as stocking horses. They take the power and they start asserting themselves in the way they ought to. Maybe more in line. So you understand. See, people don't understand me so well. Follow John Jay's methodology. Follow when it gets more to official misconduct. Follow a, a create your record pursuant to the guidelines of Alphonse Fagiolo just to give yourself a way to go. As I said, you've got to study whether they're, what they're saying and whether, how it's relevant to you. But at any rate, uh, you at least give yourself a direction. If you can't understand it from me, there's a people out in the world that are explaining how you methodically settle down 
and make your records in order to defend yourself that we've never had to do, that now we have to do. It's easy to sit back, did not uh, sit back and say, we don't have anything to do. I guess we can capitulate. I'm not looking for myself anyway, but that, I guess that's the problem. I'm looking. There's other people that need this as well, and they, we don't have a society. We're, we're missing the whole. We're missing the whole point. So, anyway, now new new outbreak. Here's the endless thing. The admissions of what's going on. New outbreak of COVID-19 in British Columbia care home where 82 percent of the residents were already vaccinated. And so th- this is a, again, I don't know what to say. Here's the news. If you, if you understood what they were telling you, they tell you the injection gives, you become a shedder. In fact, I listened to an interview, which uh, gritting my teeth the entire time when, uh, with, uh, when Anthony Fall, pray to Fauci, uh, was saying that's exactly what they're anticipating. Oh, but it's safe, but you're a shedder. If you listen carefully to what he's saying, he doesn't say this. I'm, if you listen to carefully what he, what the application of what he says is, they know you're shedding. They actually said if you get, if you if you uh, if your grandmother gets a vaccine and she goes over to two people who haven't got the vaccine, like their daughter and granddaughter, as long as those people don't have comorb- comorbidities, the grandmother can actually visit and you can hug and kiss. But because you don't have comorbidities, when you get this modernized Moderna, when you get this gene therapy, and you transfer, you shred it to somebody, then if they don't have a comorbidity, you'll survive it. So as we found out in the in the Walt the, the Disney World problem, yes, the, you're you people are we finally proven that the vaccinated are shedders of the very thing they're inve- they're injected with, and it's coming out that way too. So it, this is not import, not not surprising. Eighty two percent of the residents were already vaccinated. I'm wondering to know you know my mind wants to find out, although it really doesn't want to care to know how many people died, how many problems they've had, you know, what's going on there. But that's for some other people living there to go figure out and find out more deeply what's going on as we start seeing that this vaccine is not a, this jab is not the vaccine uh, that they're saying, but it is effect. It is a, the transmitter of what they're uh, injecting you with. Ohio man accidentally got given two COVID shots uh, in one day goes into shock. So the point here is, okay, so they can give you some extra medicine than you need or treatment than you need, and you go into shock. Well, if it's safe, your body shouldn't be responding to it into a place that it it goes into shock. And so, this, again, it's up to you to decide. I don't know what to say here. Uh, there's just so much that's evil about this, but people are, 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 are standing in line in the frozen winter for hours to get this vaccination, and then they get sick and wonder why get standing out in the open weather for hours and cold with a comorbidity didn't cause their problem, and then this kind of pushed them over the edge. I don't understand. But the 91-year-old the man in Ohio, Victor Smith, who had already had one COVID shot weeks earlier, weeks earlier, a couple weeks now, ex- accidentally received a second shot twice in one day, Four hours apart. That sounds like three shots to me. He went then went into shock. So this is not something that's inert. This this issue, even if I just go ahead and leave it less uh, right there, I went into uh, minds.com and thank you for everyone that's there and, and looking at the broadcast and or listening and then commenting. I appreciate that and the thumbs up and whatever reminds and all you do. A few that you do that. I found a, a thing called from Dragon's Lair, an account there, who says I gathered all the vaccine ingredients into the list and contacted the poison control after intros and such and asking to speak to someone tenured and knowledgeable. Uh, this is the gist of the conversation. The gist of that is he went through the list of things that are in the in the uh, vaccines, and the poison control tenured ex- expert was shocked because everything he had heard would say that they were poisons that are put in there that he would not give to his own child. And so the gist of this is, the poison control identified the ingredients of these so-called vaccines, these experiments, as poisons that you're injecting in. And in that, they gave a list to something called a pink book. We won't go through it. It goes through all the vaccines, even adenovirus, the one that, that Russia is using, and I think is the J&J. Uh, I think that's the J&J vaccine. They show you what's in it, the pink book here explains all the things they in now is involved in the ingredients of all this stuff you can see for yourself what's in it 
Uh, now, what I didn't find in the uh, from Dragon Lair and I, is that he talked about a the, the monkey, the monkey kidney thing or something. I didn't see that. I did see the canine one, though. So <laughs> look for look out for that. But you'll get a link uh, uh, on the past guys, or you will later when I get the broadcaster. You can see what's involved in the pink book designation from the from the government CDC. What's in these for yourself? You can look for yourself. Uh, what's in these uh, for these people? You wonder why they're going into shock. Even if it was viable, you're seeing too much. I, I want to find out. This is two 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 injections of that 91 year old guy. He didn't respond very good to two injections. What about your little ones going to the doctor and getting five injections with multivalent style injections? What about that? Are they not going into shock? Well, they're not old enough to tell you, so you don't know what kind of shock they might be going into. But go ahead, listen to the big harma, silent P here, big harma, pharma, harma. Go ahead and listen to the doctor. They're not telling you that they don't tell you the, the, the sheet that they're supposed to go with that. It tells you how, how much danger you're in, where death is one of the co- counterindications of it all. And so we're moving ourselves by apathy, if you will. And the lack of knowledge of how to even address it. And then the attack that we become, the racist attack that happens to us. Eh, Because we decide to do different than someone who decides what the future is that they want for us because they know better. The harm that's caused, this irreparable harm that's caused by this racism that's created by these types of classifications. It moves into the implementation, as I've been saying, of that. And we get this, I guess, state of a union address by by Biden, which is it's just, just gloom and doom. And, and people are picking up on it. But there's really not much you, you, you will do to respond. And as I'm thinking about this, the cancel culture and the declaring 100 years later that what was – not racist then is now considered racist. I, I think I want to declare right now, or declare an anticipatory breach of the future moral absolutists and cancel culture 100 years from now and make a demand for reparations from them today. I want to make reparations against their 100 year finding out that they were wrong. I want to make reparations today I want to call them out for the racist breach that they're doing today, 100 years ahead. Okay? Because this is how this works. I want reparations now. They want reparations from the past. I want it into the future. Because what they're claiming to be racist back in the past is going to be racist today, 100 years from now. So, all you asymptomats, you're all being discriminated against because you're, you have symptom deficit order. You're in, in the race of those that have symptom deficit disorder. And you're being canceled today, but you deserve reparations for those racist statements of the, from those that are imposing them upon you. And this is why, how you're going to have to stand up. These people are going to have to be called out at some point. But they make those statements. They're going to have to be called out for how mentally unstable they are. Or at least if you don't want to focus on them, how mentally unstable that discussion sounds. Where they create a race that they blame you for the problem when you're completely healthy. And this is how this thing works. We create a problem. We make just a bare comment of a, that we have a problem. And then we impose our will upon you. We call you the racist and we're the one that created the racist condition with which we now try to solve our way the future we want and if you, again this method is very effective until people step up and go to your savings clause you actually go to where they claim you are and you claim that in them and you bring the objective basis they ought to have followed and that's really how we do this like Jefferson Mining District in a comment we look at this imposition that's adjective imposition the policy imposition that we find where it violates the savings provision and we call it out for the crime that it is 
We do that by showing the objective basis in the black and white that existed prior to their imposition. So here we have the President of the United States uh, now coming out finally with his uh, primetime address. I don't know anything about it. I'm just reading a news story here. But it, it's in line with what I've been saying, how this would work. The future they want is coming. And if you want to stay apathetic, that's it's here. I mean, it's already here. It's coming down on you. Obey. Biden outlines post-pandemic dystopia in dark and hopeless first address. That's all I need to know. That's predicted. That's predictable. He said that going in. He said that last year. He said that the year before. This is the plan. He said that back in the 90s, this guy. And so it's not exciting. I guess this is where I'm apathetic at the point. But it, it's not apathetic in realizing these people mean you harm. At the highest level of the office, most powerful office in the world, I would say, given the army that, it, that he wields and the power that he can bring to bear on, on any country, how, however prolonged that would be, is in a state of dark and hopelessness that he predicted the dark winter would be here. You would be living underneath it. You, he, I understand that he was talking about you might be given permission to enjoy Independence Day. The oxymoron that that starts to be, the stupidity behind that that people complain about but won't be working at all to interfere with, which partly you do locally. You just you just stop listening to the government. But you will. I'm telling you that you will have to have a little bit more basis. You have to have your savings provision, and that's evidenced by the prior right you have that they violated. In this case, it would be the lack of right in the government to impose, as I've been explaining, how you do that through your communicable disease laws and the failure of the officials to do that most basic first step and then this other following four steps to gain the jurisdiction over you to be able to sound hopeless. President Biden delivered the first primetime address last night since uh, the beginning of the unity reign. Why this is so consistent in these discussions, why they even talk about them. It's nothing to do with Biden or politics. It has to do with how the, what the, the words are they're bringing on you, how those things work against you, and how we are not responding as a people generally to them and why those things become the new normal that he talks about here <laughs> in this article. However, out of the gate, he took a shot at the predecessor, seemingly blaming Trump for the spread of COVID-19. Now, the spread was caused by government. And so I guess we could focus on, on Trump, but you notice that it's not from the feds that create this either. It was the lack of your local jurisdictions from identifying it didn't exist there first and this is how this thing they got this all inverted and no one went to your savings clause which was your black and white that the legislature said would secure to you a protection in the case of a communicable disease emergency that it would not extend to those that were not the vector for it and when you hear like a Fauci fall prey to Fauci Fauci refiguratively meaning to fall prey to his name means Jaws. Okay, so this guy admitted they're still in test over its transmissibility, which they already admit it spreads, and, and its ability to to be transmitted by other people. They don't even know. That alone is what we've been arguing the entire time, why it was so important to figure out what it was they were dealing with. But obey, obey is what we're going to be here. The dystopian future has to be because no one's stepping up in their power to not have to obey and you capitulate even just a little bit and I've been asking you to do simple things like make records be ready with the record your what your traveling papers on this folder that shows you that you're not declared to be a communicable disease you're declared haven't been declared to be sick that the statute hasn't been uh, have them produce the statute that the has that shows that you are the communicable vector and then we have to go through certain avoidances that we can try and use, like maybe the ADA, the accommodation principle, as I've suggested before. And I get a lot of emails talking to me, asking me the questions that I've already talked about. And part of it, again, I have to apologize. I don't take, my episodes are not so formalized that I know where to go and to tell you. So I have to go on the internet like you would to type in what, what might I have said and where might it be. But I've said a lot of this before. And I don't want to make, don't not ask the question because I, sometimes I have an answer pretty quick. But a lot of this I've all, I've covered over time. 
and, and yes, it doesn't, you know, might be sounding like, well, I don't want to listen to you. I think it was Meisterbrow in the RLM chat weeks and weeks ago. Well, I'm not going to go listen to something back in March. Well, actually, I talked about it again the week before. So, I, you know, I, I repeat myself in different val- ways. So the point is, is that if you listen over time, I've actually explained a lot of this. I'm trying to focus you, if you're not listening really to me, other people that are now coming forward that we're now finding out that are doing very, very similar work, very similar re- things. Their ends might be slightly different. Their approach might be for what they want to do may be slightly different. But it's very consistent. And I would, like I said, John Jay, I direct you to John Jay if you want to do the third party in your face problem. And then like Alphonse Fagiolo has his own thing for how you go about it. I don't agree with everything he's doing. And I actually incorporate what my methods are incorporating a lot of what he, he, he separates out. You don't have to be, it's not so complicated actually. Uh, but he has a method that if you want to go for the official problem. And, and if, okay, so we have things that we can do that we're going to, we have to have with us because this cancel culture becomes everyone. We just heard that IBM is going to empower the deputize. They're going to agree that it deputizes businesses to keep you from getting, well, unless you have the, the mark, you have the your 666, whatever that ends up being for you. You're going to have to have your permissions in order to do anything in life. That directly violates the premise of the organic establishment. And yet not many people, well, they we all complain about it, but not many people know how to Settle down and identify that. Not just, as I was sp- explaining to somebody in, the e- in an email, it's not just to complain that something is happening. You have to defi- define, it's now Im- imposed upon us to have to define how it has become that. And once you do that, you're sitting in a much better position than I think anybody else would be. And my experience is that's what it does. So, the, the inaugural or the first address, prime time address by the so-called or the president, I guess he is elected, whatever the fraud that was not uncovered yet uh, is about. But he comes out here with the hopelessness, not ho- it's hopeless and changeless relative to his perception. It's hopeless and the change has happened and we're going to stay like that. And in, by Independence Day, you might be given permission to have that steak or maybe it'll be a, an impossible burger instead. We'll see. And those of you that will stand up against it, uh, thank you very much. But, again, it's still going to happen. We should be stopping it long before then. And part of that's going to happen if you focus in on the communicable disease and start showing locally. It just does hasn't been determined. And, therefore, there's no jurisdiction in the authorities that are bringing it in. And if you don't and you think you're going to stay away and you're a father and you think you're going to have a say about this stuff, and you don't quite do it right, father denied custody of children, 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 not his offspring, not his son or daughter, but the state's children, the ward of the state. Child is a ward of the state. So going in, you had a problem. You didn't uh, get and avoid that. You didn't call your offspring your property. You didn't stay in the natural law. But anyway, father denied custody of children over COVID-19 anti-lockdown beliefs. A terrifying ruling has been made in the child custody, child custody case. You have to understand the jurisdictions that are working. This is rights of child UN in position through the Bar Association. The rights of child or foreign law on your land that have now been internalized as uh, Slow Bird has identified. This is exactly how this works. At any rate, the COVID-19 pandemic is a case which involves the beliefs over COVID-19 pandemic. To remember, this is, that term is important, COVID-19 pandemic. That's how they brought it. It's not just COVID-19. Uh, to remove his children from his custody. The state only looks like he's a parent, not the father. What's that? Well, parent is the custodial agent of the ward of the state, the child. And so once you start learning the terminology, these words are so critical, you start realizing how they've moved you into a different jurisdiction. And why I, I identified in the mining law for the miners, stay in the grant terminology do not allow yourself to go over to the other side so don't go into the administrative side don't allow them to drag you to the administrative side and i think alfonso alfonso fagiola will tell you take your offspring as your your son and daughter as your property not the the trust of ob, ob, the trust item uh, object of the state 
Now, they're going to fight tooth and nail because they're the father of the country, but that's a lie, too. Anyway, you, you, this is happening now, folks. You've, you're going to have your sons in there. You, I told you, they're using this COVID, co, uh, fraud vid, 19, it's, it's, it's the answer. It's the antidote. It's the solution to your freedom, for your rights, your property. However, the court ruled the father's belief about the pandemic are danger to his children and will now only see him, a, be able to see them on supervised government access center where he is acquired, was required to abide by all the conditions imposed by the facility as a precondition of access. And so, I don't know what to say more. Here it is. You can be apathetic. You can even be defending yourself. And if you don't do the first step first, failure first, you're going to likely be like this. You might anyway, but at least when you show that they have no basis, you're sitting better than just saying, but I have rights, because you don't. Once they got your status, see, this is should have, there's not a status re- statement on its own. It becomes the fact error, the fact of a trespass against you by the or- or government, including the judge. And so, anyway, there's a way to approach this. And the more people, the more fathers and mothers that understand this that step forward, it's going to be a lot harder for the government to single any one of you out. You are now, that's the race they're looking at. They're looking at those that will defend themselves. You are considered a race by them. You can call them class as well, although that has a different connotation. U.S. Okay, so now we move into they take away. Remember, this is all tied to de- 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 destroying your family, destroying your rights. And remember about the story about now they can tell if your if your beliefs are wrong for them. This is also a reflexive answer as well. It's an agency answer reflectively, reflexively addressed that we now move into what do they do in order to, if your beliefs are no good and you don't understand the assertion of the right, we now see how as we turn, as those rights start getting taken away, we move now back federal. Well, the, the, child, the child laws are federal as well. You don't maybe understand that. And so this is the whole other problem. But but we now move into how else are they doing? You say that they're the, that you agree they're, you're a parent, you agree they're a child. You find out very quickly you have no rights at all. The child's rights are superior. And uh, they destroy the right, the family right, the natural right to family. And you never stepped up quite right. You're apathetic on even your knowledge of what it starts to take in order to fight these uh, people inside your own government. It's not. It's a tyranny. We should have overthrown this a ton of of years ago. As soon as the first observation the law was clearly violated, I was looking at Virginia. That was, again, I can't say enough about how blatant that right was in the people. Not to revolution, but to what stated the alter and abolish a tyrannical government. And you, again, make the remonstrance, you make the the official record, international record, to show that how that worked out to give you the, the right to ex- exercise that. But U.S. House, those of you Second Amendment folks now, you want to protect your family, you watch how they take your, your children now, because it's not yours, your children are not your children. Yours are offspring, sons and daughters. The state has the child that you've allowed the status to be maintained by the state in the record. The U.S. House passes universal background check bill. Okay, so I've said there's an incrementalism that comes to take your, your rights. Uh, now they're moving in for, you want to protect your family, your, your, your son and daughter from the government? No. Now you want to protect your house from the criminal, whether that's the government itself under the, the uniformed ones or someone else that understands that uh, this is the dynamic and I'm just going to take the clothe, uh, clothe myself in the gang, another gang member, and I'm going to come and invade your space. And this slowly incrementalism, no, the U.S. House just passes the universal background check bill. And when you look at what they've done, it, it would criminalize private gun sales conducted apart from any FBI background check. Now, so I'm not, I don't want to get all wrapped up into these bills. You know, this is only the House. It hasn't gone through the Senate, although you notice there's a shift in the Senate. This could go because you have lots of people that are it's co-called Republicans that are not, because this is not about party. This is about how do they best get this whole thing through without the people recognizing it. 
they don't want the Second Amendment to pop out. This is the mechanisms that we they they do to keep that Second Amendment from being utilized. Not the gun, not the right to bear arms. It's what the purpose was for. But until we get back to that antecedent right and that savings clause, and we force that to be the first thing that they're doing, then we are going to suffer this incrementalism. So the background check. Registration, being checked out whether you have the right to bear arms, is putting you on a registry of where you are, would be antithetical to the idea of a mobile group of people moving against a tyrannical government, giving the government the idea of where all the soldiers are. Not their soldiers, you with the right to alter and abolish the government when it becomes tyrannical. Not because you say so, but because you, that it, that you say so, but because you can prove that it violates the antecedents, the trusts that were established. And I don't see people, this is partly why I want people to start doing some of their, back, their paperwork, because it'll set your mind in a different place when you start doing it that, that way. It has nothing to do with watching the tyrants agree with you. It has to do with you setting your mind straight on how you're going to move this thing forward and you're going to be able to walk at the end of the day you'll be at the end of the day saying i did what i had to do the way i had to do it in order to maintain if you will if you please the high ground the highest ground the highest moral ground we could do and still accomplish what we need which should be the high ground the high ground that we need to maintain but almost predictably u.s house of representative passed universal background checks it's a threatens the, the private gun sales. The Second Amendment, people that have Second Amendment believe they have rights, is not going to stop this encroachment now, which is actually targeting where, who buys, what they buy, where it's going to be, that they bought it, that they have it, and, and take away one of the pieces of intelligence that any military needs or give them the information of where the armaments are. When they're looking back with their calculations on... On this mega city, what do we need to do? How do we need to keep control of it if we're going to press certain things? Now, this is already passed the House. It's probably going to go to the Senate. There's a description on uh, this from the Gateway Pundit. And uh, eight Republican lawmakers voted with the Democrats to pass the Background Checks Act that prohibits private firearms transfers without any background check. They're making you, again, surrogate license uh, federal firearms dealers when the firearm is of federal definition and you don't have that. You have private property. And so, anyway, I I don't know. We can go on and on about some of this, but if people aren't going to get the clue and step up here, the Second Amendment's not going to stop this incremental condition. And where the Second Amendment isn't about guns, Yet the legislation to cause registration, which is essentially confiscation, ultimately, it certainly is under, with a military response, it's certainly intelligence to the enemy now because it's the tyrant. The government becomes the tyrant. The guns, it's not about the guns. It's about, do you have an unfettered right of ability to enforce your antecedent right to overthrow a tyranny, to overthrow tyrannical government so how do, if you look at that legislation where you now can't do privately exchange things how does the proposed legislation passed by remember they're mob rule pledging representatives not you who do not agree who reject the republican form of representative government in the house that was supposed to do that how is how does that legislation not violate the principle of your right your organized right your unorganized right your antecedent right, to be able to move without notice of the government to stop its tyranny. How is that, this, these, these types of things, not these types of regu- enactments, not violate that principle is the problem that no one steps up to enforce. It's not up to the, the government to determine and regulate any arm that I would need to stop the overthrow of a tyrant who has now made the legislation in order to do that. And everybody who stays silent on that point is going to lose the point. And you will increment, they do it aside, aside what they're supposed to do. They do it adjunct to what the right is. 
And so I can I, I look at it this, I see a different news notice to us, and I say, well, you know, people are going to lose this. They're going to lose it like the, the father lost his offspring when he allowed his offspring to be called a child. And then there was nobody behind him as well. Another set, more people of his ilk, of his view, that his offspring were his, not the state's, that would support him, is going to be our ultimate downfall. And right, and then so I wanted to know, well, this legislation was coming, how'd they get most some people, well, you see what a few Demo, a few Republicans agreed with them, they're not Democrats, they're not representing you, they're not representing your right uh, to abolish tyranny that, that becomes the government itself. But how did they propagandize this? I look really quickly, and sure enough, it's all over the news. A very deadly year. <laughs> very deadly year is what came out just weeks before that bill hit. Across the nation, it was a very deadly year. The USA Today made a report. And I looked up mass shootings in uh, Duck, Duck, Go, and sure enough, all over, they were reporting everywhere. There was increases. And so I went back to one of them because it was an astonishing increase, actually. And they hide it inside. And I was a statesman journal, really savvy people, know how to hide information. Uh, sickening as well. But at any rate, uh, a person went into a gun store in a shooting range in a New Orleans suburb. They're not even talking about where they are, uh, which is in Oregon. But a New Orleans suburb fatally shot two people Saturday, causing customers and staff to open fire on the shooter. Well, isn't that cool, right? Isn't that cool? That's a deadly year. Okay, part of that I can agree with. But it was the customers and staff that opened fire and that this legislation will ultimately hinder your ability and track you because the issue is not your self-defense. It's your issue with the Second Amendment is your right to alter or abolish tyranny that the government becomes. The mass shootings in Oregon, however, the second paragraph, increased by two in 2020. Now, the title is Very Deadly Year, Mass Shootings Surge During COVID-19. The whipping boy here, COVID-19. Increased by two. This is such a great deadly year in Oregon. From one the year before. Now, listen to this, how they diminish it. And, in fact, they had a bigger story here. From one the year before, while national mass shootings jumped nearly 50% during the pandemic with crippling unemployment, violent protests, and idle youth. Wow. I don't know if you understand the subject matters are touching, but let's go back. The national average was 50%. Isn't going from one to two a 100% increase? And in fact, Oregon led the nation in the deadliest year. We see that Oregon eclipsed the national average by twice, by going from one to two. Was the promotion, this is what happened across the board. I've always joked myself, joked about this. Well, if I've got only like one and I get like my, I do this with the listeners. I got a 100% increase in my listeners. That's because one of you were listening, and then I, another one joined you next week. In the next week, that's a 100% increase, isn't it? It's, wow, I had a very successful year for listeners then by then, didn't I? Two listeners. So you watch in the second paragraph how they hide the fact that there's only two, that the increase is double what the national average is, and it's still only two. And in the first one, in the first paragraph, it's actually a bunch of people protecting themselves. Self-defense, distinct from the article in the Constitution for the right to bear arms, why you have that right against the government itself. It's in the government on the document that establishes the government. Is Your right of self-defense is not against that, although that's part of it. Your right of self-defense is antecedent that separate from the right to abolish tyranny in the form of a government. And so the first paragraph is kind of interesting. They admit that customers and staff were able to stop what the cops would have just come and take a report on. And that maybe the, the deadly mass shooting might have been good because the shooting that the person died in was actually the invader. 
the trespasser. It's not what the government, what people do against the government that does the same trespass in the form of legislation. And so we have a, a massive increase over there in Oregon, 100% increase over last year. It went from 1 to 2 when the national average is only 50. I think we have a problem. The Democratic governor is losing it over there. The Democratic governor does not have a handle on violent crime. And yet you see how absurd the news is relative to what came out to bolster the vote in the representatives for the people, so-called, to get the House to be able to justify a few, one, one act that's going to come in and go after your private right to transfer arms amongst you. Now, whatever else, I'm not even reading all of it. The whole point about this, all this legislation violates, you know, the, the uh, Bar Association attorneys and judges and Supreme Court will tell you that they there is a right of encroachment on that. There actually isn't relative to your private rights. And if you think that getting this thing inside the system, officializing this encroachment, is easy to root out, I have, well, you, you, none of you are stopping it now. That's how easy it is. None of you want to do it. And when you hear me talking about what it takes to try and root this stuff out or even bring it to the surface, you, you certainly aren't wanting to take your part in that at all. And if you did, you'd been helping. You'd been rolling up your sleeves where you are and helping. And so we have evidence of the promotion, the propaganda machine, working to allow the so-called House of Representatives to help and protect the people under common sense incremental drug uh, gun regulation, which violates the very purpose, premise, why the Second Amendment is there. It has nothing to do with the guns themselves. It has to do with the right to stop tyranny the registration, the keeping track of the soldiers, of the ability of which is what I think is being missed by the Second Amendment touting people. On top of the other things I talk about that are being missed by people with this subject matter. Why does this keep going on? Another story popped up. I go, okay, well, they're going after your guns like we said they would, and then they're coming in earnest, and they want to go get to the privateness of it. Everybody wants to make a focus of the common sense gun laws. There's nothing common sense about interfering and infringing about my right to stop tyranny. And yet no one wants to press that one. Now, you, some of you say it, but we don't want to press it in the better way. But here we have, going back a little bit here, the, the same tyranny that was absorbed, absol, allowed by these people in the same house. Pentagon approves Capitol Police request to extend National Guard support for two months. So again, the government, military, is surrounding with apparently more people than they have in, in the Middle East, where they claim the terrorists are. There's more people around, soldiers around the house of the people under a fraud that that's going to be attacked again, under the right that the people had the right to attack if they found it a tyrant. Uh, that I found this fascinating. The government is telling you the military is, is protecting those that have ocup are now occupying the republic in the form of what looks to be our representatives. And they have more guns out there than they have what they claim to be terrorists in Syria or Iraq. And that, that observation for me was, oh, but the ones in Iraq and Syria the one, are the ones that agree with the United States tyranny to overthrow foreign governments. They have more people and soldiers protecting Washington, D.C. from those that in the United States they can't bring to tow to go against a foreign government. So I found this interesting. Maybe some people don't. But they're willing to put more troops in front of the, around the White House underneath the pretend uh, potential of attack, even though that's not an attack than they are to go after real terrorism, which you find out is not real terrorism, but actually fomented by the very same people ordering the troops around your White House. I say your White House because it was supposed to be your White House. And so this whole thing, this unity idea that we keep talking about underneath this new president, the continuation and ramping up of all this 
uh, against the, the Republican form of representative government underneath objective laws, not reflexively responded to and circumvented through encroachments over many decades. I want to get back to this racism. When they create you to be the terrorist, that's a race. That's a race of people they've created. And their res resolution, they create that in order to make a response to it. Is the method, if you will, the revelation of the method, that people are still messing about that why I say don't you can't attack it directly because there's a different type of a t of attack coming against you that's not direct itself that I've been telling you the creation of race any group of people chickens are a race so I say I'm I'm a racist I eat chicken and I'm sure if I was starving I'd eat every chicken I could find uh, and, and that I needed to uh, to stay alive if there was nothing else and I would eventually because I'm just the beast that I am, I would destroy, eliminate that race of chickens from the face of the earth in my desire to continue living. So I'm a racist, because I eat chicken. A different group, like the race of lawyers, will eat you, your, your living, your life, your property. I will have to eat a chicken to survive. Now, they don't have to do that, so that's the, that's the real heinous part of that. And I guess it could be said I could live on air. Breatharians, I say, I'm told live, I, although I couldn't do it. Okay, yes, I tried. Sounded like a cool idea, didn't it? At any rate, didn't do it. So I'm a racist in the fact that I eat another group of people. <laughs> if corporations, fictions could be people too, I guess chickens could be people too. And I've tried to, I've tried to mend my ways, but I can't seem to stop eating, uh, eating chicken. I got to eat something. I found that out. I couldn't become a vegetarian. No browsing like the deer on the trees and bark uh, and, the, and, the, and the acorns wasn't going to cut it for me. And you know how much time that takes? Yeah. No, life is made, a man made life for a certain, the way he organized his things a certain way. And we can do it better. And we can manage stock. That's what husbandry is. That's what being a farmer does. That's what being sustained yield of our products are for as as important as I, part of me says that the killing of an animal to eat is I can't do it I've tried uh, myself I can't do it any other way I still need some meat I've talked to you all about that story I went through all that a couple years trying to be a vegetarian and I about died until I had chicken soup and it felt like the life came back into me and so Maybe I'm weak that way. Maybe my genes aren't strong enough for the future. Anyway, doesn't matter. That's what I have to do now. So the, the race of lawyers are preying upon you like I prey on uh, a chicken for my sustenance. Only I have to do it because literally my existence. The lawyer just gets to do it because it means something in his pocket and some prestige and some control. And so they make up all the, they are making the protection of all this. The university system is an agency of your government. The bar association is an agency of your government. Its members are running your judicial branch. They create the through the legal the legal schools, the law school, the legal school, law, so called law schools. They create the soldiers that make the legislation, which brings all this on, which brings me back to the types of thinking that goes on in the urban thinkers, the UN type people, the global order coming on you, the non governmental organizations. That exists. If you understand that a bar association is an association, private, it's non governmental organization. It's also, you want to find out how insidious this is, it's also an agency of the state. But the, last week we talked about innovation zones on a document. And I want to point out this focus they call the reckoning on, ra on racism. And it comes out in an interesting way, something I don't even pay attention to, but I wanted to bring it up. Did you notice this week? I think it was this week. The racism rising up more in the face and then tied to mental illness. Why I talked earlier about you're going to have to point these people out as being, being mentally ill because if you don't, they are going to call you mentally ill and they'll have the power, they'll have the numbers behind them in order to make it stick. But remember last week, and I'm only going to touch this document, you'll get it again. We were talking about the H-A-R-A. -A -A. Uh, we got the document from their organization, the real estate people who uh, the summary, executive summary on innovation zones, which they're promoting, stated this in the first sentence. The United States is currently facing four epochal 
and compounding crises, a public health emergency, an economic downturn, climate change, and reckoning with systemic racism. You remember when I read that? And I told you this company, this group, these groups, this Univation Zones focus on that. They reckon, it's like a ship pointing themselves in uncharted waters. They're reckoning towards something that's out there. In other words, they have to believe it's there and they will work toward getting it. Even if it's not. That they are reckoning with systemic racism. Well, it doesn't exist unless you want to talk about that race of lawyers. And the reckoning would be reckoning to, not reckoning with. At any rate, all these words, all these ways to look at this, when I point out and I look at the world and I see these things happening and I make this comment, systemic racism, this document's been around for a long a while, sent to me a long time back with it from an emailer, concerned about how this works out. Slow burn 678 identifies that it's the incremental balkanism of your system within unsupported areas right now. But they talked about reckoning with systemic racism. Then I recognized something that happened the following week. Just to point out this global system systemic propagandizing and the creation of racism to in order to be, make it a cause in order that they can profit from it. And it, it came out, it, it comes out with a prior discussion. I told you they were coming after us on the mental health. They come after your guns because they say you're mentally unstable and red flag. They have made uh, already, it's in your laws and counties, mental health help Nonprofit organizations that come forward to help everybody in their mental health because we've found what? We've found that racism is a mental health issue. And all that white privilege, you know. Well, I, so I went quickly and I said, well, well, something's come up here and I'm going to get to that. Made the news, apparently. Big time deal. And I got to the point of 17 million viewers. And these two points were prime propaganda developed right after I read that to remind me of what's going on relative to the UN and the promotion, the global promotion, who's involved, how they're doing it. Racism and mental health is a document I'll give you a link to. People of color and all those who li whose lives have been marginalized. Boy, that's everyone underneath Title 42, Section 1981. But don't forget about the fact of color people here. All those lives who have been marginalized by those in power if you actually apply this, you'd be looking right at the people I've been pointing you to. But anyway, they're going to put it on you. Racism and mental health. We talked about the reckoning with racism. That now shows here what I've shown you in UN speak also. is focusing on mental health because they want to make you crazy. So they want to be able to control you without you, they take away your capacity to respond. Why you have to start responding with your capacity. Don't let them take it from you. The people of color and those whose lives have been marginalized by those in power experience life differently from those whose lives have not been devalued. They experience overt racism and bigotry far too often, which leads to mental health burden that is a deeper is deeper than the uh, what others may face. So here's their connection: why the color? Why that's going on between the why they fabricate this thing uh, through the color of your skin which was actually just the obligation it should have been the obligation of your character which is your obligation or your character which is your obligation to the government through the civil rights act which was actually the right to pay exactions of every kind and don't underestimate what it says in there i want you to go there it's title 42 section 1981 really read what's going on that people they call people of color and those whose lives are marginalized, and they tie racism to mental health. When you go back to that Innovation Zone document, and understand the university system is tied together, tied there, DARPA is tied there, the military is tied to all that, all these private-public partnerships are tied into there, all tied into that. Then when you're looking at racism, you're looking at also being able to open the door of mental health. And anybody who is focused on being a racist, in other words, if you don't believe what I believe, you're the racist. We will have a power. We will have infrastructure, capacity built in to deal with you. And so let's look at, is there a connection to the racism mental health? Let's look at the UN Conference Against Racism. Plenary. On a title, the Intervention of American Psycholo Psychological Association Delegation to the World Conference Against Racism. 
just the title, folks. Okay, so now we know the Psychological Association delegation. We also know that the book on psychiatry is just made up. And so we're going to, if you start to put this together, you realize how the, the trap is being built. And so I try to apply that to say you're going to have to unspring this trap or show that it's not applicable. Actually show these people are the mental people. And they're doing it for a reason. And so we have the connection now between the UN and that uh, mental health, uh, racism, and psychology are connected. I won't go through the documents. I don't have the time. You can read this stuff. You need to really put this together. This is the nuts and bolts on how they come against us. And once you see it, you can speak right through it. You don't even you don't argue with them. You just go right to the point that they violated you on and didn't have the right to. And then uh, Journal of Urban Design and Mental Health. So what we were talking about, the urban thinkers already look that everybody outside of their idea of urban design has a mental health problem. And so racism becomes integral. Why the real estate development companies through that innovation zones becomes important when they reckon with systemic racism. It's their utility of ra the use of calling something racism that they reckon to in order to profit both ideological imposition and monetary as well. They get you to pay for it. If you look, the innovation zones are getting the government now, the federal government to pay because I think they've tapped out all the, all the local state governments as we identified in 2013. But Journal of Urban Design, don't under, and remember, last week they're talking about the urbanites reaching out and just grabbing this, the rule to bring it in because they're not self-sustaining. They're actually not sustainable, but they're understood to be the citadel of the city that will control the lands around them. And now they're extending their arm. Now, what did I, why, why am I bringing all this up? As I hope I yeah, get in there quick. Tying together what I've told you long before, and I mentioned this before and move on, about mental health. they got to get this thing where they have the controls in place that they can create a, 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 a problem in you in order that they have the solution for. It's built into the system. It's built into the U.N., as an implementation, like the rights of child is, to create the problem of child for you and your families, which they also then, now we tie into racism, we tie it into mental health, which they're using to take your guns as well. And people don't figure this out. I don't understand why people don't see this, but I don't know. I, I, don't, I have really have a question. What are, how aware are we as a people? And why is it, if I'm wrong, no one can tell me, get me off the path and get me on the one that's better and productive. I, I don't know. but So why did I even focus on all that before? I kind of did this trick inside out backwards. It's because it's something that I noticed. I wasn't even interested in it. It came up through somewhere, a feed, some link, something I saw somehow from an interview that just happened. And I've talked about this guy before, and I happen to like him. I happen to feel sorry for him in a way, and I don't know him about him. He's a man. He knows he's been living his life. He does good in his life. He also happened to be part of the royal family, which I'm not interested in. But just looking at his problem and his mother being assassinated, that kind of struck me a bit about kids, you know, little ones that are affected, and how they would find out, go through their life. But this I'm talking about Prince Harry. He was in with his wife, um, Meghan Markle or something, uh, with whom? Uh, speaking with whom? An interview this last week with Oprah. And whom is she? She is one of the big one of the big propagandists, developers, the promoter of Biden, the promoter of uh, Obama, Change, UN. All right, she's a supposed philanthropist. She certainly isn't an example of the downtrodden black if color was relevant. And yet she will stand out and we call people of, that are not uh, different than her color skin having a privilege, a hypocrisy. She is one of the prime propagandists promoting the UN agenda. Why is this Prince Harry thing and uh, Mer uh, Meghan Markle even interesting? It's because, because of the Prince Harry's condition problem as a child and the abuse that he saw through the royal family and his mother being murdered, assassinated. And he's had trouble with that. He's come out years before when I identified this. But he did it through the royal family to identify that mental health is a problem. Please do not make, impose upon me that I'm saying the mental health is not a problem. The mental health I'm talking about that's a problem is the one you really have. 
not this one that's political, that they promote. He's using, he's being used or he's used as a stalking horse. His actual problem, the trouble that he had and the abuse through his witnessing what happened to his mother and the, and the family and all that, that thing that happens to a baby with their mother, I'm sure. I don't have that experience. But what kind of clued me in on him, he seemed to be a little more sensitive to that somehow. I don't know. I'm just too at a distance looking on. And he's turned out to be pretty upstanding, it seemed. And then he has this problem, he admits, and that's all a problem, and and, and I don't want to say fine to the problem, but I'm glad that he can help or try to get help for that. However, that becomes a stalking horse for this UN thing. And I found it fascinating that Oprah, all of a sudden, at the same time this thing is coming back, this mental health racism thing where they have already led um, prime the pump for racism being a mental health issue that oprah comes out to have an interview with him over mental health and his wife and racism the alleged racism going on and i don't want to sound like i'm trying to be neutral here i have not even looked at the story except i'm looking at subject matter spoken of in context of promotion political promotions and this came up right now now Oprah is nothing, no one to sneeze at. I mean, as far as, this is a influential woman. I don't care what you, what your opinion of her is or not. I have no sense about it. Oprah's interview with Meghan Markle, Prince Harry, a big win, drawing more than 17 million viewers. 17 million people watch this. And I don't, I'm not getting into any opinions or nothing. I'm saying, This is a subject matter promotion, tying racism with mental health. To me, this is a serious affront if people don't quite get it. Oprah doesn't, doesn't, and then, okay, so then this shows us now, I wanted to focus on the next story I found, just looking quickly through to try and see, is there something here that would be the points and clues to it being more of a political propaganda than the substantive one, where people, there are people that mistreat other people because of the color of their skin, in this case, the color of their baby's skin, as I'm understanding a bit, or the mental health of a child watching and witnessing his, the, his mother being, uh, not witnessing it, but having to deal with the assassination of your mother. And high, and in the family, and a royal family, no less, on top of that all, the, the scrutiny, this is the fishbowl that he lives in, and the other guys too, and the other, his brother too, but anyway. Why would this, and the stocking horse idea, would they bring brought forward right at the right time to start pushing this right on forward to bring it up and make a thing and they tie together the subject matters of mental health and racism as a political front? Just what Oprah does is now told to us to have gotten a good viewership. But to qualify that, when the interview happened, it wasn't truly an interview of the comprehensive view, I hard understand it was a couple hours long, of the problem of Prince Harry, Meghan Merkel, I think, or his wife, Mrs. Harry, <laughs> and uh, the problems there as a real issue relative to the the relative to the family, the complete family imp- um, interaction. Another story pops up is Oprah, Oprah doesn't ask Meghan Markle about her family in a tell-all interview. What I noticed there is, again, it would, dig, it would uh, I think, be evidence that if you confined a tell-all to a certain two subject matters, then this wasn't the tell-all. This wasn't that type of a tell-all interview. What it is is a propaganda to promote those two issues that were focused on and not look at the tell-all part which may bring in more context. And so I'm looking at trying to qualify. I don't think I'm trying to. I think I qualified. This interview was coming at the right time to do a political propaganda end. And I, I'm going to focus on that. I hope these people work their problem out. But this is being used in another context because we heard it's been in the paperwork. They're reckoning with systemic, they're reckoning to essentially systemic racism used against us. They aren't intending to solve that. And that would have to look at the tell-all being the whole family of what may constitute a check and balance between what we're told on one side versus what we hear later on the other. That type of an interview was not done. 
this looks now, as I look at this, a tying together of the very things the UN propagandists are involved in that Oprah is completely a part of. I have a very hard time to differentiate. I can't find a way to differentiate this. There's no clues that there could be an extension that I then found out a study of a research gate of all places, justice for George Floyd and a reckoning for global mental health. In other words, you see the words and the conditions tied together, however you believe about the George Floyd setup or not. This certainly says it would be more set up, being that you see that they're using all the terms that would tie it all together, global mental health, George Floyd, and racism. You see, this is a building of the whole thing, as I'm just looking through quickly to qualify. Is this propaganda, or is this, I mean, are we looking at the inside of, are they using maybe Prince Harry and Meghan Merkel's problem? Maybe he's a part of it. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Abused people do kind of interesting things in trying to defend themselves over time. This is what I've, I've told you before on uh, this gender problem, this gender bender nonsense. But look in the law, look in legal, there's no gender, but uh, but legal comes out to protect gender. It makes no sense. So there's a problem. When it makes no stops making sense, then you have to start looking at the real cause behind it. That's the stalking horse. So justice for George Floyd on ResearchGate, a scientific study tying reckoning for global mental health. Okay? So we have this condition and consistency looking at the Oprah in interview as a propaganda utilizing racism that does exist in between people and a mental health that they're trying to tie together as important and you feel heartfelt you get locked into the problem of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle on a private level when in fact what they're doing is they're advancing the political thing right in front of you and getting people to agree with it the buy-in is emotional Oprah Winfrey, Winfrey boosts Joe Biden with a get out the vote of it. I wanted to qualify. Is Oprah is consistent with her party affiliation? Actually, it's no party at all. It's agenda affiliation. Would she still support Biden? And certainly she did, as she uh, supported Obama. And more importantly, in my mind, Flash, I thought she was running for office, which I don't remember now if she did or not. It doesn't matter. Oprah Winfrey is an agent of change, and she's a very successful agent of change. And she will has been known to use white privilege against people. It doesn't exist. It's fabricated against her and justifying counter despite her per, her um what do you what do you call it? What has she done? The I, I see no value in it. So the word is a value. Uh, whatever she's done, I can't remember. The word just slipped my mind. Uh, what her uh, successful, how she's successful. See, I don't believe that's all a success. I see it as a crime, a propaganda crime against us. But to them, to her, she's a success. And she's using that. And she has a sway on people. It's particularly a lot of women, I understand. And, the, and again, now we're attacking the family, and the women could be dropping their guard against this other condition, like the father losing his custody rights. That actually went to a woman as well, and it looks like it's an advantage, and it looks like it went to the right party, but it's all done wrong and then under political. Remember, rights of child is politics, not that they care about your sons and daughters. But so Oprah Winfrey is a political propagandist, and so she's not speaking to Prince Harry's mental problem or Meghan Markle, Mar, uh, Meghan Markle, Miss Harry's racist state uh, allegations those may be in there in, in, in between the interaction of people but that's not what's being promoted this last week heavy 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 integration coming through this uh, I, I hope i'm not i hope you find a little bit of interest in that this is serious because of the problem relative to how they do this stuff right in your face and you miss the point and while this was going on, they've got the infrastructure, they built the capacity in order to take you down, to take you out in the future, to set you up for things like they have, what can I say, before, like they're doing with the guns. I don't know that people appreciate this dynamic, how they do your housing, how they do well this growth stuff. How they're taking out your 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 food. All this all this is done the same way. It, it seems to me they get a couple propagandists who are bought into it. They're probably profiting from it, 
And they, I'm sure Oprah profited pretty handsomely here. And yet we get into the private uh, harm that uh, Prince Harry is, is and, and it's not just to him. This is just the focus for this interview. His problem of mental health and then her mental health based in racism is this synthesis that they're bringing together to get you to buy into. And you're going to look right past the promotion and what they're doing inside the system to eventually take you out. On the other hand, you have some people that are out there, again, another politician, and uh, he kind of calls this out in Oprah. And I want, I use this only to show you we really need to take that step back, stop getting engaged. If, you know, Prince Harry has a mental health, you know, he's really troubled. I, I really felt sorry for him in that regard. And Meghan Markle now is getting that. And we do have the natural meanness in people is one thing. That needs to be resolved amongst us. But to allow politics to step up and use it politically to put more regulation on people, to bring warm and fuzzy care to people that you see it comes out like mRNA treatments where they lie left and right. That has the as death as a side side benefit. We're talking about societal death here. We have Ted Cruz at some point. I, have a, I found something where Ted Cruz condemns Oprah's comments on white privilege as utter racist BS. Identifying, if we take a step back, that what she said on white privilege is as racist as as the racist she was claiming had the white privilege. It's a fabrication. Again. Finally, someone calls, it's not finally, but here, someone calls that out for it is BS as well. It's the kind of thing we have to start to do to protect ourselves. As I was saying before, those that want to come in and, and talk to see people with symptom deficit disorder, you're healthy, and say you're a problem, and if you don't agree with that, you have a mental health problem that I, the one telling you that you are the problem, get to cure you will not be able to avoid that without understanding what I'm saying and or taking the steps now to start building the record you need to be able to protect against that. Because the objective basis I've been finding out, we've done this plenty of times now. And again, it's, a lot of people don't get involved with it, so it's it's kind of foreign a little bit. Dealing with the BLM and the agencies and public land management and all the types of things they try to bring in through their university system and all this nonsense that's supposed to be tied to sustainability. But we bring the real science in. We bring the real uh, law. We and they call okay. So then they call you crazy. They call you that you're non-cooperative. When we bring the real law and we bring the real science backed up, not that it's there, but how it's there. As I keep saying, make the record, and then you place that into the record. They can't call you crazy no more. And then it immediately puts the burden on them to have to show how they had more than just their mere allegation that they were right. And so it, this is imposing, again, a additional burden that, yes, we shouldn't have to do, but it's because we've let the enemy in the gate. And we're now literally, we don't know this, but we're fighting hand to hand, six feet away, but fighting nonetheless, just to hold and maintain what we were to be secured in. Ted, and I'm not, again, I'm not, I don't want to exalt anybody, but Ted Cruz condemns Oprah, who's the propagandist, for utter racist BS. It's all becomes racist. It's the method. It's what they fabricate. The very thing they complain about is what they're fabricating, and they are themselves. In this way, I appreciate uh, Senator Cruz stepping up to make that open statement. I'm sure he took some heat for this. Right? Oprah is a billionaire <laughs> that lectures us, he says. He's out of Texas. Don't mess with Texas, but they still are. I don't know what to say more about that. But Texas, they're messing with you. I just saw a picture of a lady who's... Supposedly the mask things are gone, and yet she's a 65-year-old woman thrown down on the ground. I don't know if it was the cops or some security agent, and, and attacked over something that there was no right to do that, but is happening. You say we don't have to do this. I would say I agree with you, but we are having to have to do this. Because there's people like billionaires, philanthropists like Bill Gates, that help to promote and foment the thing, things 
the alternatives, which if you buy into that, will advance the agenda. And if you fight without substance, they use you as the mental midget to propel them against all your rights. And it's a simple technique that they, you allowed them to do it because you weren't aware, you weren't knowledgeable. In your antecedent power, your antecedent rights, their lack of ability, their lack of find of looking at the obligation and duty they had to your savings clauses, which are substantial, and then asserting that, not just knowing it, but asserting it. And so behind the woodshed, the lessons are that you're teaching people that, and amongst ourselves, we have to be gentle. But when we have this kind of an attack that's coming at us, we have to be pretty forthright. And I thought Ted Cruz's statement, again, just I'm just searching around looking for evidence of the truth of this. It seems to me to be the truth that uh, what we saw in this interview was tying together the UN agenda, which Oprah is totally into uh, underneath her philanthropic cover to advance this nonsense upon us that has no real basis, but is an ideology. It ends up being a religion. And she herself uses that, if you will, color in order as a stocking horse herself, being so-called black woman. See, under the law, there's no color. Under the law, there's no gender. That people use this under the color of that authority shows you that they're really criminals. And they're not bashful about doing this. And my antidote for help, or my suggestion for the antidote is you take the base, the objective basis and assert it. You don't have to attack the, that point. You can't attack that point. You don't talk about the color. You go to what your rights are right up front. You go to what the counterbalancing point is. My suggestion is you go to the point where there's no authority to say what they did because you place yourself in a place other than they prejudicially asserted you to do that to you. And you go to the neutral place at least. And so it's not an argument either. I keep, don't argue. You will not win these arguments. There's no one really to hear you, which is another problem. There ought to be a lot of people to hear you. But until there are, like I said earlier in the broadcast, until people step forward and help others that are trying to fight this thing, that are defending against this thing, until more people come to help that way, we're in some uh, real trouble. We're going to have to take it. Each one of you that wants to step up is, I'm talking to you because you're going to be the feeling the brunt of the well-organized and well-trained capacity they have, these people have to pull this off. 17 million people watching is nothing to sneeze at again, COVID-19 or not. Okay? This is a big, you don't think 17 million people organized? They got a whole bunch of other people that were bought in. That represents the system at this point. I didn't hear 17 million people come out and put that down in the way I'm suggesting to you, that that was an affront to you. The people, generally, around the world, in impo imposing this new thing, this new unity. Well, boy, Oprah's big time in unity. Anyway, hopefully you will step up in non-dependently non by yourself to defend yourself, and we'll all do that together, and we'll come back as one, as an ability to do that. And I'll thank you very much, Grimner, what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Everybody's syndicating the broadcast. I appreciate all that. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs are nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. Feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.